Hello, everybody, and welcome to the North American Qualifier Tournament. I'm TJ Osmo, Cutie Sanders, and joining me today is Robert A. Wing. How you doing, man? I'm great, TJ. I'm super excited to be casting with you again. Uh, I've been missing you since the Fireside Gathering Championship. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I I'm looking forward to seeing the, the conclusion of the top 40 here. Uh, we have uh, today and, and throughout the rest of the weekend, we're going to be uh, broadcasting uh, once again the continuation of the top 40. Today we're going to be broadcasting the, the the upper bracket, so the the top 16 of the upper bracket. We're going to get to see the top eight, which are the players who got buys into this round based off their their points seeding. So this will be the first time we'll be seeing these players. Yeah, it'll be extremely interesting to see what kind of decks they brought. Uh, obviously, we you know have yet to see them play. It'll kind of be interesting to see if the players who are already warmed up maybe have like the edge, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because they've already played through. Yeah, uh, it's going to be good Hearthstone the other way. Yeah, uh, definitely looking forward to seeing some of these players that were on top of those those points standing. But of course, the format throughout the weekend and throughout the rest of the World Championship is going to be Conquest. We've actually put together a little video for you guys explaining the format. Conquest is a match format created for competitive Hearthstone tournament play and is the official match format for the 2015 Hearthstone World Championship. Here's how it works. Each player begins with three decks using a unique class for each deck. For example, a player can have a Warrior deck, a Priest deck, and a Warlock deck, but not two different Warlock decks. When a match begins, each player selects their first deck without telling the other player which one they've chosen to play with. Garrosh versus Uther. After the first game ends, the winning player's deck is declared victorious and can no longer be used, and they must choose from their remaining decks for game two. The losing player may choose to use the same deck they just lost with, or one of their remaining decks. This continues through games three, four, and five if necessary. Once a player has conquered their opponent with all three of their decks, the match is over and the winning player advances. Conquest will be used at the 2015 Hearthstone World Championship, which has a prize pool of $250,000. Now that you know the format, try taking part in an online tournament or a fireside gathering near you. The Conquest format has really added a lot of competitive depth to the, the Hearthstone scene. Yeah, uh, it's obviously strategically very different from last year's standing, where you could just try to go the 3-0 the route and just switch mm. your favorite deck. Um, Conquest requires players have a, a little bit more of a breadth of Hearthstone knowledge, though. So. Yeah, definitely. You see a little bit a wider variety of, of decks, and players have to uh, be proficient with more than just one deck. They can't go into it like thinking that they're going to 3-0 with their favorite deck. They have to have a little bit more right. uh, in store. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about what's on the line for these players moving forward. So we talked about the top 40. Uh, the top six players from this weekend, from the matches this weekend, will move on to the regional qualifiers, which will happen uh, in San Francisco at the Folsom Street Foundry. Uh, in a few weeks, right? Yeah, they'll actually, uh, six players from uh, the North American Qualifier Tournament, which is what we're casting today, uh, will be heading over to San Francisco to meet two players from the Latin America region. Uh, those players have actually already qualified, so we know the names of those players. Uh, there's Moljel and Correa. Mm -hmm. Correa is a, another 14-year-old player, much oh. like Amnesia. Moljel. Oh, sorry, Moljel yeah. is a 14-year-old player, uh, much like Amnesia. And yep. yeah, it's, it's crazy to me, all these 14-year-old uh, Hearthstone prodigies we have popping up. It's... Yeah. I, mean, I can't get past rank five this season. I'm 28, so it's clear that it's like half the age, double the skill half kind the of age, thing. Half the age, double the skill, yeah. And, and Craig, the other player, is 25. So right there, just those two players alone, shows the, the age difference of, of comp competitive Hearthstone. I mean, 14 years old, 25 years old, that's more than uh, 10 years difference between these two players, and they both qualified from that region. So that's uh, really cool to see. Yeah. And, um, of course, uh, like we mentioned earlier, the... Uh, top eight from points earners are going to be playing for the first time today. Uh, so speaking of that, uh, what players do you have making it out of the top 40 and moving on to the, the regional qualifier? So uh, myself and the design team for Hearthstone actually uh, drafted players uh, on a whiteboard. We, we tweeted this out from the Play Hearthstone account, but uh, most of my players have actually been eliminated. Uh, Hyped was my number one pick. Okay. And obviously, he went down at the at the hands of Raynad. So yeah. uh, I'm going to have to say uh, Raynad is kind of my pick going forward. You know, I've, I've seen him throughout this tournament. He's really got, like, you know, people say he's salty, but he, mm. he's obviously got that competitive drive and kind of that passion to win. For sure, yeah. Um, so I think I like him as my pick going forward. What about you, TJ? Uh, well, I'm a, a real sucker for the ladder heroes. Um, so players that basically got all their points from the ladder. We have a couple of those players today. Uh, Fibonacci being one of those players. Uh, he had multiple rank one finishes uh, yep. throughout 2015. He had two back-to-back -back yep. in March and April. So, uh, but he hasn't really made a splash on, in any tournaments. He doesn't really compete in opens. Uh, this is going to be like his first big showing. So 
uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing those guys, the guys that got most of their points or all their points from the ladder uh, to move forward in. Uh, but let us know what you guys think. If you guys have predictions of who you think is going to make it through to those regional qualifiers, you can tweet at us using the hashtag Road to BlizzCon. You can also tweet at ESL Hearthstone yep. or at Play Hearthstone, or of course at Robert and I. We'll be joining in on those conversations later throughout the day. Yeah. And of course, we do want to uh, give a big shout out to Blizzard, Twitch, and ESL for making it all possible. We have plenty of games in store for you guys throughout the weekend. Lots of Hearthstone card sling in action. So wouldn't be possible without those guys. Also, we do want to give you guys a reminder that we all are also doing a Amazon promotion. Yep. Um, so you guys, if you want to purchase uh, packs using Amazon coins, you get Amazon coins back for all of your purchases. So uh, you, you get more out of that. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot like playing the uh, the turn six Emperor Thorisan, you know, in, in terms of value for your wallet. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, by the power of Ragnaros, you get reasonably cheaper packs. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, reducing the cost. You don't want to leave those Amazon coins up on the board more than one turn. Right. Uh, well, you do, but Amazon doesn't. <laughs> uh, so big shout out to those guys. Make sure you guys, if you want to expand your TGT collection, to head over there and uh, get those packs today. But uh, we should be uh, getting ready to jump into the first match. We should talk about that a little bit. It is going to be uh, Zelay versus Purple. Right. So that's uh, obviously kind of an interesting match when you consider the fact that up until recently, those two were teammates. Uh, yeah. Zelay and Purple were both on, you know, Team Archon. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, Purple recently, you know, has uh, left that team. He's gone on to Gamer Origins, where he's acting as both a player and a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, these are actually two of the players that were kind of seen as favorites, yeah. really, to, to advance to the America's Championship. Both extremely high-skilled players. Zelay, uh, recently, obviously, a, a legendary series alumni. Mm -hmm. And uh, talk to the guy. Just incredible Hearthstone knowledge. Very good player. Yeah, and it, we can speak to his passion a little bit, too. He plays a lot of Hearthstone. And uh, he's actually coming in as the number one seed. He was the number one world championship point holder uh, for 2015 with 250 points. And that was gained through a, a mix of, of tournament performances, like you mentioned, the Hearthstone Legendary Series gave him a good chunk, but also many top 20 ladder finishes, which is really impressive. And you can see the, the decks on your screen there. Uh, Zelay has Druid Hunter and Warrior, and Purple's rocking Druid Warlock and Warrior. So similar deck lineups, the difference there being the, the Hunter and the Warlock. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see. Uh, Hunter is one of those decks where uh, you know it just it just kind of gets there sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, depending upon the the version he's playing. Yeah, I'm not since we haven't seen him play yet. I'm not sure if it's a more kind of like a hybrid or if it's more like a, an aggro hunter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very curious to see you know how that performs because Hunter I is a deck that a lot of people didn't bring to this, uh, and you know obviously he has faith in it. Purple's lineup is a little bit more consistent with kind of what we've seen throughout this tournament. Players are obviously very comfortable with that uh, that druid, warrior, warlock lineup. But mm -hmm. let's uh, let's take a look at these mulligans. So okay, uh, Zelay looks like is uh, is opening up with Patron here. Let's see. Yep. And Purple looks to be a, a hybrid hunter. Uh, you do see the abuse of Sarge in there, which is. Uh, a pretty telling sign that it's not the full mid-range. It does have some hybrid elements to yeah, it. Yeah, Savannah Hyman is usually a pretty good indicator that yeah. they're not going for that straight up, you know, just just charge minions, <laughs> just uh, damage to the face kind of thing. Uh, so we'll have we'll to see what happens here. And Zelay mulligans away some stuff, and he, he gets kind of an interesting hand. Um, you see Frothing Berserker execute an Emperor Thorazan. Um, Emperor Thorazan is a very important card, obviously, for Patron. You definitely want to have that on turn six. That said, the turn Emperor Thorsan comes down, he doesn't really provide much as far as stabilizing the board or getting rid of minions. So it's definitely hun uh, kind of a big turn for Hunter where they can yeah. kind of get a lot of momentum going forward. Very uh, curious to see how this plays out. Yeah, this this matchup can be sometimes tough for the Patron Warrior if they, <laughs> if they get a slow start. Right. All right, so we actually see Zelay is on Hunter and Purple is, uh, is on Patron. Uh, it looks like uh, Purple... Well, it looks like Purple here actually is on the Hunter, and it looks like he has kind of a solid opening hand. He could choose to uh, coin out the Knife Juggler, uh, which would mm -hmm. give him, obviously, it kind of forces uh, the Warrior to have the answer in the terms yeah. of the Fiery War Axe. Yeah. And if it doesn't have it, it can things can really quickly get out of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, you pretty much hard mulligan for weapons in a lot of matchups if right. you're playing the Patron Warrior, because you don't really do too much early on as far as putting pressure. So the biggest thing that you want to do is just try to avoid taking too much damage, especially against Hunter and especially against more aggressive hunters, is you just need to find that stabilization point later in the game where you can start applying pressure yourself. We were talking about how both of these players uh, are obviously, you know, very, very dedicated ladder players. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it shows they both have the uh, the Golden Heroes rocking. So we yeah. have Golden Garage and Golden Rex are here. Uh, so we see, you know, Warrior chooses to armor up. That's not uncommon in the early turns for Patron, yeah. especially if there's not, a, you know, a Fiery War Axe to play. Mm -hmm. um, so the Onus is now on the Hunter to just start developing pressure. And he goes right for the Animal Companion. So we'll see if he gets the Huffer. 
He does not get the Huffer. He, he misplays and gets Leoc. Yeah. Obviously, it's not a misplay, but it's a, kind of a fun Muffy joke there. And wow, Tempo, Frothing Berserker coming out. Yeah, I, I really like that against Hunter, especially when you don't really know what kind it is. Uh, I mean, he can pretty much guess that it's mid-range uh, at, the, at the very least. Uh, maybe hybrid, he can say, just because most of the time, aggressive hunters are not going to miss turn one and two. Right. So uh, seeing that Animal Companion being the first card played is usually a pretty good indication. But you can tell with with uh, purple is patron warrior. I, it yeah, it looks like it looks like purple's the patron warrior. So okay, he yeah, you, away. You, you can see with his hand, he doesn't have much to fight back on the board. He doesn't have weapons. He doesn't have despite yet. Right. And so Zelay, he needs to use his board. Zelay has a. We saw the arcane golem uh, coming up, which is kind of the the tell that this is actually just that uh, that more kind of hybrid style of hunter. And the abusive sergeant is going to let him trade really, really quickly into the. Uh, Frothing Berserker, which is great, because you got to get off that. You have to get that off the board. Yeah. Otherwise, it can just start tearing you up. And he throws down the knife juggler too. Uh, he's he's made the read that purple maybe doesn't have the tools to necessarily deal with the board early. And against Patron, like I think it's super smart to just go hard. Yep, definitely. Uh, pressure is one of the biggest things because it forces the p the Patron player to use their combo spells, spells that they would otherwise use for combo, like whirlwinds and interages, to remove the board, which is a big thing because it means. Their high damage combos later in the game come even later. Right. So it gives you more chances to push for that damage and and, and sneak a victory. So we saw uh, Purple there. Uh, he had four mana to work with, mm -hmm. and he opted to execute the Leoc, which seemed like it was pretty much destined to happen. But he had the choice between using a Shield Block or an Acolyte of Pain. Uh, why do you think he goes with the Acolyte of Pain over the Shield Block? He needs something to fight back on the board. Uh, they both generally will draw you a card. Uh, also. Health totals can be a little bit deceiving when you're playing against a hunter who's more aggressive. Uh, basically, your health pool can sometimes force them to play a little bit more aggressively. Um, shield block sort of acts as like that buffer zone later on in the game when you can sort of bait out a couple more cards and then shield block your way out of range of whatever burst they have in their, their deck because hunters will always count their damage like instead of lethal multiple turns ahead. Right. Unfortunately, so. uh, Harrison comes out and, you mm -hmm. know, he found a nice bow to add to his collection. <laughs> He's like, that right there. That belongs in a museum, and, and that's going to give Purple, you know, another card. It's going to slow down Zelay's momentum a lot because, you know, it, that's three damage he can't swing with. Yeah. And I would be afraid to see how many death bites Harrison Jones has acquired over the past six months. Probably a lot. Like, he's, yeah. you ever wonder if it gets to a point where he's just kind of like, e you know what, I don't actually need this. Like, I'm going to break the weapon, and I'm going to let you draw cards, yeah. but I'm actually good on my collection. That belongs in my storage closet. That belongs in the storage depot down the road. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Zelay, you know, is kind of in this situation now where he just lost out on, on some damage, and he's kind of having to figure out, you know, do you want to kill the Harrison Jones? Do you want to, you know, just start facing? Uh, obviously, if you're twitched at, you're probably going to go ahead and want to face, because yep. face is the place. But mm -hmm. Zelay uh, obviously has to really think this this turn through. And the rope's winding down. He could put the uh, knife juggler in, yep, for the convenient trade. And he, playing the Lothab really kind of hurts the patron, because it means it can't use a lot of the spells. Fortunately, the power of Ragnaros. Yeah. The power of Ragnaros is there. Uh, that's going to discount everything in Purple's hands and basically essentially 100% negate the ability of Lothab. Yeah, which is uh, pretty crazy because a lot of times Lothab, like you said, it's so effective against Patron because a lot of their stuff is are either spells or creatures that they don't really want to just throw out there. Right. Emperor Thorsen being the exception because, uh, <laughs> of course, he yeah, he's not getting the ultimate value out of it because the cards that he has in his hand aren't as that valuable, maybe the Patron. Uh, but still, having a, something to do on a Lothep turn as a Patron Warrior is always a bonus. Yeah, uh, Emperor Thorsan, definitely one of those things where you would like to kind of leverage it for later turns where you have like Frothing Berserker, Warsong Commander. He did have Patron, which is good, and, and the Free Whirlwind is always, you know, he, he draws Warsong Commander. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, and this is this is probably going to start to get a little bit ugly for Zelay uh, because he put down, you know, obviously the Hunted Creeper. Hunted Creeper is one of those cards if you're playing as a Hunter, you just... You don't want to see it past like turn two yeah. because patrons just like, well, I now have license to just make a ton of patrons. Yeah. At the same time, you, a lot of times you can't really afford to not play it. Right. Because that's potentially, I mean, four, if, if the game's going to go for more than five turns, five, six points of damage, it could end up being the beast that you need to, to kill command later on in the game. So, uh, I, I mean, it's going to come back to bite him, of course, but yeah, I, I don't really blame him for, for throwing that down on the board to just try and get more bodies out there. No, and absolutely. You know, when you're, when you're playing as the hunter, you do not have the luxury of just saying, like, in the end, I will get you. You have to push for damage, and uh, playing down the hunter creeper makes a lot of sense. Uh, Zelay, 
actually in a position where he can clear most of the patrons. No, he can clear all of the patrons, but yeah. he wouldn't be able to clear the Warsong Commander. And Savannah Highmane, obviously a very powerful card. Maybe at this moment it's not exactly what he needs to be drawing. So we'll see what he chooses to do here. It looks like he's going the, the, the face route. And he's going to... Yeah, let's see. Wow, if he unleashes the Hound, he gets very close to lethal, but he's going to wait. And yeah, Purple purple has some, uh, some ways around this. Yeah, he even has the Armorsmith Whirlwind. So that's just ridiculous. When you have Warsong plus Armorsmith Ooh. plus Whirlwind with patrons on board. Double Armorsmith now and the Unstable Ghoul. This is... Going to make it uh, pretty much nigh major. impossible for Zelay to break through. Yeah. Uh, Zelay took the play, you know, that, that put obviously Purple down to the lowest health total. Uh, it just happens that, you know, obviously Purple has the ability to generate a lot of armor right now. Yeah. Now, the funny thing to note is this game would have been a lot different if that Savannah Highman had been there one turn sooner. Right. Because on turn seven or turn six, instead of playing a Haunted Creeper, he would have played a Savannah Highman. The Patriots would not have been able to propagate as well as they did. Right. He would have had more pressure on the board. So, um, Pretty crazy to think, but the double armorsmith just completely blocks you out of the game most of the time. Once you're starting to get to the stage in the game, it's the hunter where you're, you're running out of steam. Yeah, Zelay's actually going to go ahead and concede. He he sees the writing on the wall, and uh, that's going to game one to purple. Uh, and his patron deck is now cannot be played. Yep. Uh, so Zelay's going to get another chance to, to play that hunter, though, which uh, hopefully mm -hmm. will yeah, have better luck in the second game. Yeah, purple does have a warlock in his lineup. So most of the time, uh, no matter what kind of hunter it is, it does match up pretty well against most Warlock decks. So um, he, he can take solace in the fact that he is going to be able to deal with something in Purple's lineup moving forward. Uh, you can see Purple uh, has Druid and Warlock remaining. Right. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Zelay chooses to approach this, if he's going to bring out a... Uh, I would assume Zelay is obviously a well-known patron player. Yeah. So it, uh, it stands to reason that that Warrior deck is probably patron. Yeah. You wonder, gotta wonder if he's just going to bring out his own, or now the patron's done, he's like, all right, I'm going to really try to get this Hunter win. Yeah, yeah, now, uh, one thing to note is uh, Zelay actually, when he first burst on the scene, he was known as the Control Warrior player. Right. Which is pretty crazy to think. He just sort of switched over to Patreon. He was known for actually putting Frothing Berserkers in his Control Warriors. Well, that used to, I mean, back in the day, Frothing Warrior was actually kind of a staple of, like, the initial Control Warrior yeah. builds. Back when, like, Tides of Time and mm -hmm. Kit Kats were really kind of, like, bringing those decks together. It used to be uh, very common. So, you know, it's kind of like, hey, Frothing Berserker, I'm kind of going for this new job yeah. here. Maybe you come with me. And he, he, he definitely took Soleil with him, but I, I I actually would be surprised. I don't want to say I wouldn't be surprised. I would be surprised if it's Control Warrior, but if there's any player that's going to do it, I, I'd i say Zelay has a chance to, uh, especially since I've been seeing a lot more Control Warriors recently, at, at least uh, in, on ladder. It takes usually takes a while before ladder decks start to make it their way into competitive because players are very hesitant to change things up that they know works. Right. Which, why would you change Patreon? You know it works, but um, it would be a, a really um, big curveball to throw at Purple, his former teammate, who knows he likes to play Patreon, right. if, if he uh, if he brought out Control Warrior. Well, we see Zelay has actually opted to, to go with the Hunter again. Mm -hmm. He's going to go against the Druid. This is one of those matchups where it's largely dependent on kind of the, in my experience anyway, the initial draw of the Druid. And we see the purple's got pretty solid cards. Now, now he drops the Innervate, gets another one, it looks like. And he hires uh, Darnassus Aspirant, mm -hmm. which is... Darnassus Aspirant is a new uh, card from the Grand Tournament, which has been really quickly just brought into most of the Druid lineups. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's one of those cards where you put it down and against a lot of decks, it's kind of one of those things where they're forced to, like, do I deal with this or do I really want them, like, accelerating really quickly into, like, the turn three or four based on when you play it? Yeah, yeah. Uh Players, when they were theory crafting about TGT, they thought that uh, the Darnassus Spirit would be the only card that would change in like mid-range Druid or double combo Druid. But this deck has actually gone through a lot of evolution. So you see players now put in the Savage Combatant in there yeah. as well. Um, they change up the, the, the mid part of the deck and put in a lot of tech cards as well. So uh, mid-range Druid is actually evolving quite a bit as TGT moves forward. Right, so uh, right in the opening hand of purple, uh, we see Swamp Ooze. So yeah. mm -hmm. I got a feeling this is not necessarily, I don't think Swamp Ooze is necessarily in there to deal with uh, with Hunter, but it's kind of those things where, unfortunately, Rexar is going to get caught in the crossfire. Yeah. Uh, as we see that, once again, Zelay has that bow really early on. So uh, purple's already kind of sitting pretty, even though he doesn't actually have like the most Amazing turn two turn. He's just going to get that abusive sergeant off the board as opposed to do something like, say, innervate out the pilot or trainer. Yeah, I think the ooze fits in really well into mid range Druid. They, they're really heavy on the five drops because they have uh, Azure Drakes, Druid of the Claws, sometimes Sludge Belters as well. They're really heavy in that, that mid part of the deck. Um, and Acidic Swamp Ooze can sometimes uh, help you get through that early curve a little bit better. 
and oh, yeah. more things. In the uh, in the Druid Mirror, even, I mean, even though you don't necessarily get the value of, like, breaking the weapon, you do immediately get the value of just putting a 3-2 on the board. Yeah, it can challenge our, our Darn Darnassus Aspirant if you don't have a Wrath or your own to, to combat it with. So right. uh, leaving that up on the board for multiple turns can really... Um, change the game not in your favor so it it, it it really is good in the mirror matchup too that's a good point we see uh we see now purple you know does drop the ooze and he breaks the lay's weapon and then he uses that innervate to bring out the shade of naxxramas he's got a very very commanding board so Lay's like no <laughs> i equipped a bow for a reason yeah. and then he uses the bow to very spitefully get rid of the swamp ooze hill to in vengeance killing the ooze with the with yeah the uh the rest of purple's curve though uh is really pretty good at the moment you know he's got he's got the shredder Next turn, he's got Druid of the Claw, and Zelay's hand <laughs> is just not really what you want to see. Uh, no. I mean, yes, it's not as bad if you if you bounce a Shade of Nax Ramus or Piloted Shredder with a Freezing Trap, but he's not really building his own victory condition, right? He's he's just kind of he's playing what's in his hand. Uh, he's looking to get value off of the bow. Yeah. But it's it's just not a great situation for him to be in as a Hunter player. Yeah, and he does have a Savannah High Main, which is a big threat, but if you're behind on the board. Sometimes the Savannah I main just doesn't do anything but maybe contest a creature and a half or something like that. And uh, the Druid just has so much more longevity, I guess, with their, their hands and with their ability to draw more cards than a hunter usually can. That uh, in those grindy games, a lot of times the Druid will win because eventually they'll just draw a combo and combo you out. Yeah, purple, purple drops down what I've uh, started calling lately the stop sign bear, which is please, <laughs> let's slow this down. Yeah. Uh, stop sign bear comes down, though, and... Uh, that spider's like, oh, really want to really wanna do some things. Can't so much. And uh, he does not activate the trap, which means not only does Zelay not get the charge on the, the eagle horn bow, he also can't play that second freezing trap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it is turn six, though, thankfully. And Zelay has a very, very clear play if he wants it. Uh, he might consider the Unleash the Hounds, although there's not a lot. It doesn't look like that's going to get a lot done. Uh, but if he does Unleash, he could, you know, pepper in a hero power. It's always good to pepper those in where possible. But got to figure Savannah High Main is what he's thinking about. It's just such a bummer that you play Savannah High Main, you know it's just going to die. And you're going to be yeah. behind that board. If he plays Unleash the Hound, he's basically just killing the Druid of the Claw. Right. Uh, really quickly, I want to point out, just notice this. Uh, Zelay looks to have a picture of Brian Kibler on his desk. He do That's actually a mouse pad, I believe. Plays the Brian Kibler. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, that's delightful. Yeah. I like uh, how he actually purposefully, m most likely purposefully put it in his frame, so. Brian Kibler led me the string <laughs> yeah. to win this tournament. He, we see that uh, Delay does opt for the, uh, for the Savannah High Main as the rope is winding down there. So, Purple has some really good answers uh, in his hand to deal with that Savannah High Main. Additionally, he's just got a really solid board, right? Yeah. He just needs to get rid of the freezing trap, which he does, and then he can, you know, look into possibly silencing the high main if he wants to. Yeah, he's gonna do that too. He's here, power a spider off the board. He even trades his high main into, or not his high main, his a uh, shade of Nax Ramus into it. Yeah, he's definitely playing um, pretty conservative. Yeah, I would say so because with freezing trap up, a lot of times force of nature is go to because you you pr you bring back one of the trance, it can then be used to proc future freezing traps right so all of a sudden you have this tool that that makes it so freezing trap is almost useless uh but he really put a lot of emphasis on making sure he completely removed the high main because that's one of the main tools that this type of hybrid hunter uses to sort of push through so as long as you play mm -hmm. that grindy game uh you play really for for that sort of value style your cards overall as a druid inherently have more value than the average hunter card so um at the end of the day if you play that super grindy game you're most likely going to come on top if you're the druid yeah, and obviously if you're purple, you know that on turn seven you have Dr. Boom. <laughs> so it's not like you're hurting for yeah, damage. Exactly. Right? You're yeah. just kind of like, well, that line could be problematic, especially like a, you know, if a Iron Beak Owl comes out, Kill Command comes out. Let's just get all the beast activators off the board. So it perfectly makes sense from purple's point of view. Here's a lay. Uh, you're just kind of thinking, like, what can I actually do here? And he, he procs Unleash the Hounds. Two, turn, or two Hound Unleash the Hounds. Not where you want to be in your day. Uh, he's going to go ahead and weapon into the Druid of the Claw. And at that point, you know, you don't really, really want to play Freezing Trap either. You know? Hey, what do you, you want to give him the Keeper of the Grove? Yeah. He has to go with it, though, because he wants the, the... I would imagine because he wants the value on the bow. Yeah, the bow charge is, is... Seems like it's the reason why. You just... You're out of cards. You need to just squeak out as much damage as possible. And the Freezing Trap, even though you're bringing back a Keeper of the Grove or, I mean, maybe even a Bond... <laughs> uh, it's you, you still just have to do it. Right, and obviously Purple doesn't know that it's a freezing trap, so maybe by playing this down, Zelay is kind of 
you know, signaling that it isn't a freezing trap. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's trying to say, oh, it could be a you know bear trap. It could be a you know something. Maybe a snake mm -hmm. trap even. Ooh, a snake trap. Snake trap. Yeah, but you know, purple purple sitting in a really good position right now. Uh, Zale is down to two cards, and he has to figure at this point maybe it's start time to just start uh, pressing his own agenda. He can get rid of that dog obviously very easily with the hero power if he wants to, because unfortunately freezing trap if that's what it is. Will not put Malfurion back in Malfurion's hands, though. No. No. Not um, quite. Not quite how that works. Uh, yeah. Looks like Zelay's just kind of figuring out if he wants to you know, yeah, kill command something here, but. He's really taking his time, but what do you even kill command if you go for it? The only option I really see is just kill commanding base, which, <laughs> I mean, you're bringing it from. Yeah, you're bringing yes. it from 21 to 16, so you're starting to apply pressure, but. Zelay I, knows where the place is. Yeah, he does, yeah. Yeah. If, and if you're purple, you have to be thinking, what's that last card that he has in his hand? Like, he just killed Command in my face, and I have a very intimidating board. What could he possibly have? So, uh, You know, maybe he's, maybe he's wondering, is it second kill Command? Okay, so he went, he goes ahead and activates the Freezing Trap with the Boom Bot. Not, you know, he's not really losing anything for it because he yeah. basically got that Boom Bot for free. That Boom Bot hits for a lot. Yeah, that's going to be lethal. And that's lethal, yep. It had to hit for, I believe, three or more because he had enough mana to fit in a hero power as well. So three would have put him at seven. Right. And you can see, uh, you know, Purple's going to take game two, and that puts Zelay down 0-2 against his former teammate, Purple. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, you can kind of see on Zelay's face, you know, he's a little bit, he's a little bit like, ah, darn it, I just, you know, wish I'd had that opening hand that, that was better tailored to Hunter. Yeah. You know? I, this is the culmination of almost an entire year's work for a lot of these players. Zelay, we talked about it earlier, he's put in a lot of hours. Right. And with the goal of making it to BlizzCon, he's the number one points earner for the season, coming in at the as the first seed. He really earned his buy to this 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 top um, 16 winners bracket round, and now he he's sort of watching it slip away. Now if he if he loses, he just goes down to that lower bracket where he still has a chance to fight out. But uh, that's basically throwing away an advantage that he gained from um, from getting that many points and putting himself this far in the bracket already. Right. So obviously, uh, Purple just has to win one more match, and he's got Warlock. Not sure if it's Handlock or, or something more like Demon mm -hmm. Lock or Malago's Combo Lock, but yeah. Uh, if you're Zelay, knowing it's going to be Warlock, do you do you go with the Hunter a third game? It's it's tough to say. Um, Zelay can be pretty okay with a couple of these matchups. Druid tends to do pretty well against the slower Warlocks, um, where and Hunter does pretty well against most Warlocks. The Warrior, if it's Patron and Purple has Handlock, it's going to be a tough matchup. So I'd probably just throw out the Hunter again if I was Zelay. You, you you've seen your deck, you're, you're familiar with it. Uh, you're, you're comfortable with it after a couple games, even though you've lost. So you might as well just throw out, throw it out again. Right, not to take anything away from Purple, who's played excellently. Yeah. But Zelay's really not had the best draws for no, this, no, uh, no. this style of Hunter. So maybe figure like, all right, twice I haven't gotten the best draws. Third time, charm. Yeah. Totally work out. So all right, so we see, you know, Purple, as we said, Purple has, oh, so oh. we can see this. Uh, this looks to me, just from the opening hand of Purple, more like the... The style of Zoo, or not Zoo, uh, Handlock that runs Doom Guard. It's, it's very similar to like standard Handlock that, that I've seen, but the Doom Guard is kind of this added threat that you can put in. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay, so yeah, the Void Collar kind of signals that it's more the Demon. Demon uh, Handlock. Handlock. Yep. Yeah. Usually this deck runs one Doom Guard. Yeah. Uh, a single Doom Guard is usually all it takes because you don't want to clutter your hand with Doom Guards. Right. Um, the Demon don't Synergy start. really isn't that extensive. You run Malganus, Jaraxxus, Doom Guard, and Void Collars. Like those are that's usually the extent of the of the demonness, right? And uh, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, okay, Jaraxxus comes down off a of void collar. You can't activate Jaraxxus to gain 15 health, but hmm. Jaraxxus followed up by Defender of Argus it's is ridiculous. just <laughs> such a wall to get through. <laughs> and we kind of see like this could actually be a scenario in the next few turns. Yeah, the, the void collar comes down and then Jaraxxus, and then you just Sun Fury, and you're like, all right, good luck. Yeah, definitely. And. On the other side, on the flip side, though, real quick, Zelay has a pretty good opening hand as Hunter this time. Yeah, he doesn't have the Owl. Owl can be pretty big in this matchup for those types of scenarios where a Void Color comes out, you don't know what's on the other side of it. So um, I, I'd still say that this matchup is in favor of the, the Hunter player, whether it's mid-range or the, the hybrid version, uh, just because a lot of times uh, the Demon Handlock doesn't have ways to fight back as much. Um, like in the early game. But Purple's had a pretty good start for, for how this game's gone. He's got a clean board. He's taken some damage, but not too much so far. Right. We see Purple didn't wait for like that big Hellfire swing turn to get a bunch of stuff off the board. He just he used a lot of single target removal, which brings Zelay to an incredibly interesting turn three. So if you look at his hand, 
he could possibly look into using the coin to drop both Haunted Creeper and Mad Scientist. Uh, he could also put down the Eagle Horn Bow to try to get the value off of the Eagle Horn Bow. Or, it's, if you've seen that much single target removal, maybe Arcane Golem. As much as you don't want to ramp up the, you know, Warlock's mana, maybe there's merit to possibly playing that, because you've seen already one Dark Bomb, you've seen a Mortal Coil. Yeah. What else do you think gets rid of that? Oh, and Mount Guinness. This hand is stacked for purple. Yeah, that's like the majority of his demons in his first... 10 cards. That's right. pretty we crazy. Were, we were talking about the fact that there's actually very limited synergy with this deck, but he just he has Jaraxxus. The thing for Zelay right now, and this is kind of a scary world to live in, the best thing that this Void Caller can drop is another Void Caller yeah. that leads into either a Jaraxxus or a Malganus, and Zelay has no silence. Yeah. Oh. The, the thing he'd probably want to come out of that would be Jaraxxus, because then, then you don't have that as a defensive tool. Right. It's sort of like a peace of mind thing where, yeah, a 315 on the board is really annoying and it's going to clean all your creatures off. But you know that once you get him to below 15, except for heal bots, <laughs> he's going to stay below 15. Right. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> What you don't want to hear is that he is uh, he is Malganus. Yeah, yeah. He is a turtle. You definitely do not want to hear that. Mm -mm. Nope. No. You really hate turtles as hunters, <laughs> which right. is ironic because yeah, you're a beast master. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, we see right here, Zelay, Zelay just goes, uh, I'm not messing around with that Void Collar. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to start hitting you in the face. And Purple responds very quickly with the Heal Bot. Yeah, and what this does is, uh, Zelay has sort of indicated with this play that this is a Freezing Trap. We don't know for sure, but we've seen double Freezing Trap, we can assume. And so this forces Zelay to basically kill that anti heal Bot with damage, like with a Weapon Bow or with his creatures, or let it be frozen. And then he has to do eight more damage as the game progresses. So uh, Zelay... Yeah, he does go ahead and removes that with the bow. Right, and we see here the Lothab. He's looking to block out some spells here. <laughs> second Void Oh my gosh, second <laughs> Void Collar and the Sun Fury. Purple is a cruel, cruel man. <laughs> yeah, you can see Purple's reaction now. He's like, well. Oh, go for it. Break, <laughs> see what happens. Break these. Yeah. And Zelay is over there. You know, uh. No owl drawn. He does have an absurd amount of damage in his hand. Right. But, I mean, he's going to be really sad when both of these Void Callers bring out demons. And Zelay is obviously an extremely smart player, but oh. oh and it buffs the <laughs> Void Caller. I don't know if you saw Zelay's eyes. They just briefly went wide. He's like, no. Yeah. Yeah, and, that's, this is all kinds of worst case scenario. Uh, purple, purple just kind of like, yeah, how are these demons? You like them? Yep. And Brian Kibler once again smirking in the background. <laughs> Yeah, Brian Kibler, <laughs> Brian Kibler is not coming through for Zelay at this point. No, not at all. Uh, Zelay has got to figure out now, not only was that Void Caller, like, the Void Caller was already annoying enough, but now it's buffed. He gets the Huffer, which, you know, Huffer is always a welcome sight. Mm -hmm. But on this side, even Huffer's like, I don't know, Zelay. I don't know about this. Yeah, this is just tough because he can't even kill the Malganus here. If he throws the, the he has to throw the Haunted Creeper in or the Mad Scientist. And then he doesn't have enough damage to get through the Malganus. So, I mean, what do you. <laughs> that's a 517 Draxus because of the buff from Malganus. Yeah, Zelay's, Zelay's face right now is very telling. He he just kind of keeps making faces like, really? Yeah. Uh, now, that said, Zelay does have a freezing trap down. So, he might be hoping that one of these just goes away. Obviously, you know, you would hope it's a Malganus. Draxus is one of those things we talked about that can be replayed to bring him back up to 15 health. Well, uh, actually. Jaraxxus comes back to hand. It costs 11. Oh, wow. So, yeah, Jaraxxus is effectively dead. Yeah. That Malganus is still incredibly intimidating, though. Yeah. And, and he's actually out of Void Callers, so that Jaraxxus is dead weight <laughs> right now. Oh, uh, that's a... Uh, a whole lot of dead weight. Yeah, Jaraxxus is, uh, is going to take on more of, like, kind of a supervising role right now. Mm -hmm. He's like, yes, yes, make this play. Good, yeah. good. Your world is doomed. Yeah, you obey Jaraxxus. You you will obey Jaraxxus. So Arcane Golem comes down, and, uh, you know, it's very foreign to see an Arcane Golem traded into something else, but that's what happens. And Zelay's hand is as such to where he doesn't, he kind of used all his early game minions, yeah. early game, as they're intended to be used, but, you know, now, now he's not in such a great spot because he's he's sitting on kill command and quick shot. He's actually at lower health than the hand lock. Doesn't usually happen. Right. The, the demon lock uh, obviously can bounce health, but. Now it's just kind of a matter of purple just playing down big minions. And yeah, it, this game, Zelay actually had some of the best draws that he had throughout the series. But right. he didn't find an owl, which was the draw that he needed the most. So it's uh, 
I mean, sometimes the de demon handlock, that's why you run those demon synergies, because sometimes you put out those double void callers, they pull demons out, and y you win games from it. It's it's pretty crazy. And now Zelay just basically has to go on a prayer here and hope that he pieces together enough damage before he dies, which he dies next turn after this one that we see here. So, Although, interesting point. So he's going to, obviously Purple's going to be able to play down the Molten Giants, basically free, one mm. mana. He plays down Lotheb. He doesn't have any taunts. Yeah, but with Lotheb, I mean, what are you going to do with two cards? The, the only possible things that he could kill you from 11 health would be Unleash Kill Command Hero Power, which he just doesn't have the mana to do that with the Lotheb. So. All right, we see the well played come out from Zelay. Uh, gets three owed. He fought really hard the first few games. Unfortunately, he didn't really quite get what he wanted, but Purple uh, is going to advance on. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that's a pretty big deal for, for Purple. Um, he came in here, he had two opponents before this with uh, Siger and uh, Legend of Timmy. Right. The Legend of Timmy being the guy that made it through the uh, Fireside Gathering. So uh, he's been tested so far. He had to make it do from the round of 64 all the way up until here. And Zelay just came in with his number one seed and he got 3-0. That's a pretty big deal. 3-0 on, on Hunter. No yeah. Less. Yeah. That's, uh, that's definitely something, you know, if you're Zelay and you're you're going down into the lower bracket now, you, you kind of give that some thought, you know. Mm -hmm. Rexar didn't serve me super well, you know, maybe in the future series. You know, we'll see what he chooses to do about that. But Yeah, definitely. So, uh, as we mentioned earlier, Zelay will move down to the lower bracket. So, um, uh, we'll be seeing him again, I believe, tomorrow is when we'll play uh, at least the, the earlier stages of some of the lower bracket matches. So, uh, if you're rooting for Zelay, then, then tune in for the rest of the weekend. We'll definitely be seeing more of both of these players. The, the next match actually is going to be Trump versus Bloody Face. What do you think of that match? Yeah, so Trump, uh, you know, he's one of those players who last year people were kind of like, oh, you know, he's more of like an entertained streamer. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's kind of what he does. Uh, he's really turned the corner, though, this year. And, you know, a lot of people are looking at him as a big threat in the uh, North America qualifier tournament. Yeah, multiple tournament victories. Not right. just high tournament places for Trump, but multiple tournament victories. He actually has a couple points as well coming in from ladder finishes as yep. well. So Trump definitely looking to make a name for himself on a little bit bigger of a stage other than streaming. And yeah, Trump's kind of a small guy, not yeah, super yeah, yeah, well yeah. known. You know, Maybe this will be his chance to really break out and show everyone who he is. Yeah, one of those underground players definitely looking to make a name for himself. But we're going to go to a quick break before we jump to that next upper bracket match. But don't go anywhere, guys, because more North American qualifier tournament action continues right after this.